Hi everybody! Welcome back to another episode with Shani Does Everything uh, with remote job tips. How to get them, how to find them, how to keep them maybe. Let's get them first. So I just released uh, the interview video with a very experienced remote recruiter, Hannah. We picked her brain to figure out what you guys needed to do to get the perfect resume. Make this a checklist and get your resume ready to go. So officially, I'm Shannon, and we are gonna talk about the top 20 pro tips to get your resume ready to land the remote job of your dreams. I would so appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. We have a ton more stuff coming, tons of interviews with people all throughout the remote industry in tech, those who have come from a non-remote background, those who have come from teaching, medical. I've got some more recruiter conversations happening because those are the people that you have to talk to to get the job. Um, so yes, like, subscribe, follow me on TikTok and Instagram, Shani Does Everything. And uh, we've got a really great community of people there to motivate you and get you into that successful role that you truly want. That's my goal at least. So got my handy dandy notebook. This time it is a Mac. <laughs> and let's do this. Start with tip number one. Make your resume pretty and easy to digest. <clears throat> Formatting is important. You don't want to just lazily type your entire resume just in a Google Word doc with, with nothing special. These recruiters get thousands of, of resumes for one single job posting. Even if it is a very well thought out resume that sets you apart, who really cares? You're set apart. Plus, if it is nicely formatted, it's easy for them to read. If you think about it, a recruiter generally looks at your resume in six seconds. That's it. So if you have it laid out in the right way and in a way that they can easily digest it, you're one step ahead. Number two, if you're not really comfortable with writing a resume on your own, Google it. Let's say you're in the, the customer service field, right? And you're wanting to get a, a customer experience role in tech. All you have to do uh, is get on LinkedIn, Google, and search customer experience remote resume example. Now, I highly encourage you to never copy and paste from someone else's resume. It's not morally right and, and it's not you. They want to hire you, so give them that. But it's never a bad idea to use someone else's, a successful one, as a template to build yours. Number three, this one's uh, this one's interesting and um, I really, it's new. And I think that's one reason that this video is really important because we are in a whole new age where when I was being taught about interviewing and resumes, the bullet points were a little different than they are now. One of them is that generally you put your address on a resume and, and we're moving away from that a little bit more now because it generally it doesn't really matter where you live because you can work from anywhere. Hannah and I discussed in, in my last video uh, about adding a time zone. That could be beneficial here. But generally, you do not have to add your address to a remote resume. If you'd like, you can add a state, especially if it's helpful. Maybe they have a headquarters there. But don't feel pressure to do so. Adding your time zone is helpful, though. Number four, put the most important information near the top of your resume. That would be, of course, your name, title, skills, your objective, and uh, experience. Those are some of the main points. And those need to be up top. If, you, uh, if you've ever worked in retail, I have. When you walk into a store, they put the best items in the front. Get your attention. Make you want to stay. That's what you're doing. Make that recruiter go, hmm, oh. Same tactic. Um, number five. When you're listing out your experience, let's say, McDonald's is the job and you're listing out your experience. Do not put them in a paragraph form of experiences. 
I clean the fryers and then I swept the back room and then I stocked the stock room and took care of customer. No, 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 no. This needs to be line by line, bullet by bullet. This is something I've done, something I've done, something I've done. Successfully trained 250 uh, new hires into our program. Um, but you want it to be very clear, very concise. If they only have six seconds to read your entire resume or the important parts, you want to have the control of what they're reading. So when you put those bullet points, be concise, be direct and share the most amazing things you did, not the little things. Number six, you want to include your job title. For example, if I were to search for jobs right now, I would put Shannon Fulton Gibbs, Revenue Enablement Specialist, because they know that that is the level that you have made it to, right? But you also want to add a quick synopsis or an explanation in your objective line. A lot of people, and I, let's see, I've pulled one up. For example, you could say something like, as a creative, self-directed graphic designer with skills in Quark, InDesign, and Adobe, I'm eager to leverage my experiences in the role of lead designer with your X company. You want to name the company. I would personally name the company because it shows that you've done your research, you are being very direct, and it feels personal. Uh, no, number seven, bias is something that is real and true and exists in our world. There's bias for everything and age is one of them. Especially in the tech industry because there is this assumption that if you are over a certain age, then you probably don't know how to handle tech. Um, I'm not saying that is true. I'm just saying that that is a bias that, that exists. And in order to completely bypass that, that bias, at least in the very beginning, you don't, don't mention your age and you are under no legal obligation to share your age, by the way. But one way that a company could tell how old you are is if you put the year that you graduated. That is an easy calculation to make. And so if you would like your age to be left out, don't put your graduation date. You're just like every other Tom, Dick, and Harry then. You just want it to be as basic as possible where you are only being graded on your accolades and experience and not anything else about you that you can't help. So number eight, Unless you just graduated from college and you don't have a lot of relevant experience, you should put your education first. Uh, generally, that's what a recruiter is going to look at first, and generally experience outweighs education. Again, this is role specific, so that could be different if you're uh, applying for a role where a college degree is 100% required. But if this is a role where the experience is more important, uh, or you can assume so, put it first, and then put education below that if, if it's applicable. Um, number nine, highlight your accomplishments in each role. If you remember I mentioned earlier talking about bulleting out each individual experience task that you um, had at each company because it helps the recruiter read them, it's also a good idea not to just put what you did in that role, but you can put what you accomplished in that role. Perhaps you were the first woman to beat the sales goal. Perhaps you were the first person to train a certain number of people or the first person to reach a certain number of reviews or the, the person who built the review platform or the process. Mm. I have a problem. Listing your accomplishments shows them that there's a lot of depth to you, that you are capable of accomplishing things and, and succeeding at tasks. Number 10, use action verbs. It's tough reading through resumes where it says, I worked at McDonald's and what did you do? And they say, I was really good at counting money and wiping down the counters and sweeping and counting down the till and not only is it just kind of a lot of words and not much meat but it's also not very direct 
And so using verbs as the first word on each bullet keeps it concise, keeps it the same throughout. And so if you begin each of your sentences of your accomplishments with initiated, organized, handled, managed, engaged, advocated for, if each of your sentences begin with that, looks the same, it feels powerful, and it feels actionable, like you've done something. Um, number 11, this is, this is one of my favorites, <laughs> is consider adding links to your resumes. That is the beauty of this digital age that we now live in. And if you show them, number one, that you know how to use the tech, that you know how to take advantage of this world we live in, they're going to know you can do your job in the tech world. You know, I preach on it. Add your LinkedIn profile because so many recruiters use that as supplemental information. They want your LinkedIn profile. If your experience is in design, engineering, um, anything like that, you might have a portfolio. And if so, link that. Show yourself. Be proud of what you've done. And on top of that, if you don't have a portfolio, it's never a bad idea to build one. If your um, career revolves around writing, you should have a writing portfolio, samples of your writing. That's really good for no matter the position you're going for. I've built one before for a customer service role that they said part of their requirements were building the help center, the, the help articles. So I had to show that I knew how to write. Uh, I built my own website on medium.com, which is an amazing website. And I just kind of blogged to myself, I just wrote. And it, and it worked. Uh, number 12, network. This is a little bit of an aside from a direct resume pointer. What I mean by network is if you know someone that works there or have a connection, mention it. Talk to that person. If you don't, get on LinkedIn and look at those second connections, third connections, and begin connecting. Because one great thing that can happen is someone goes, Oh, hey, I'm getting on an interview with this girl named Shannon today. And someone goes, I think I know who that is. And they're like, oh, really? Suddenly, you're not a stranger. And that never hurts. Uh, number 13, huge. Use key phrases from that specific job posting in your resume. If you are applying for a job and the job posting says, we are looking for someone who understands how to use Zendesk. You should take that, put it over here and say, currently certified in Zendesk, right? That should be like the first thing that you do. So take all of these, I don't want to call them buzzwords, but keywords from the posting. This is who we're looking for and put them into your resume. They'll look at your resume and go, oh, I found them. This is who we've been looking for. Now, of course, make sure it's true, right? Don't lie. But use those words because they're going to be like, wow, we've been looking for you. Number 14. I had to teach my husband this one. Include all your long-term jobs, right? Jobs you've been at for a long time because they want to see that you're capable of longevity, that you don't jump ship as soon as there's an issue that arises. If you've had these small jobs in between these big jobs where you were there for two, three, four months, don't include them unless you have nothing else. Because all it's going to do is tell them that you can't hold a job. If you have a reason, a good reason, for leaving the job early, include it in your resume or in your cover letter that's attached to your resume, right? Include that. Fill in those gaps on your resume where it says, like, you know, I worked here from January 2021 to March 2021. You could put a little asterisk that says was laid off due to COVID-19, right? That way they know why it was such a short span of time. Because if they see the, a bunch of short ones with no explanation, it's a bad sign. Thing that I did, number 15. One special thing that I did is go ahead and send pre-references. Sounds silly, but I reached out to five people that I worked with in the past, at least one manager. And I said, can you write a one paragraph blurb of why a company should hire me immediately and what it was like to work with me? Include your name and your email address. 
and they wrote that and I included that with my resume up front. I sent a resume, a cover letter, a hundred reviews where people were name calling, like saying Shannon is the best. And I sent five people saying why this job should hire me all in one shebang. And of course my LinkedIn profile, it worked. I got the job and it, it was different. Something that no one else had done for that particular job. They were very impressed. Used to, at the end of a cover letter, generally we would write references upon request. I'm sorry. They're going to ask for references. Like, why even put that? Number one, go ahead and send them. Number two, don't say anything because they're, you're going to be asked for them. Which leads me to another thing. Be sure you have people willing to be a reference for you. This does not need to be a personal reference. It should be a professional reference. Someone who has worked with you and people prefer management. <clears throat> Number 16, let your personality shine. Maybe it's the color of your resume. Maybe it's a cute picture of you in, in the design of the, the resume, which there's nothing wrong with that. Remember I said you can hyperlink things out? Do a video. Maybe you're really good on camera and you want them to, to feel who you are. Maybe there's something really special about your presence. You know, and it's really important. A lot of these, especially remote organizations, have a very strong opinion of, of their culture, their work culture, how they mesh and the type of people they hire. It's usually very cohesive. And so if you're able to showcase who you are, this beautiful, wonderful, kind person, they want to add that kind of person to their ranks. So if you can inject yourself into your resume somehow, do it. Whether it be through a video, pictures, in your cover letter, letting them know of some of your interests, but don't be afraid to be you and to showcase you. <clears throat> Number 18, every single time that you send in a resume, you better make sure that you make it specific to each job you're sending it to. Do not go send, 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 send to 15 jobs. No, you should say, okay, this one is asking, remember I said the keywords? This one is asking for an experienced customer service manager. Okay, send. All right. This one is looking for, oh, they're looking for a highly motivated self-starter. Right? And then send. Match them and make it for each one. The same thing with your cover letter. I know it takes more time, but if you want the job, you're going to do it. Uh, number 18. Do not have any typos on that resume. For the love of God and everything that is holy. It makes you look careless, depending on the amount of typos that can make you look uneducated or that you're not trying very hard and that's not what they want for this position they want someone who's going to go that extra mile so your chance to show them what kind of worker you are number 19 don't send off your resume without a cover letter every resume gets a cover letter even if they say oh no cover letters send it because that allows you to fill in any gaps showcase who you are um you can highlight like your major accomplishments but remember, you are customizing it for every single job that you're applying to. And number 20. Don't give up. You're going to get no's. People are going to say, mm, no. Most people, most jobs won't even give you an email back. They just will ghost you. And that's okay. I ghost people after like calling me twice. Could you imagine getting a thousand emails a day? You're going to get ghosted sometimes. And it's okay. If you're realizing that you're getting all no's for a very long time, that's when you should stop, step back, look at what you're presenting with. Am I really filling the position that they want? Am I expecting that they're going to train me? Or am I coming to them as a whole and saying, here, I can truly enhance your business. I can, I have a lot to give, not I have a bunch to take. If you're not doing those things, figure it out. Step back. Maybe you're applying for the wrong jobs. Maybe you're not putting your best foot forward. Maybe it's you. That's hard to say. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's you. But don't give up. Continue applying. Go hard. You got it. I'm here to support you. But be sure to comment below and let me know if there's anything else you want to chat about, anything else that you want answers on. I'll see if I can find someone to interview and pull it out of. But I'm grateful for each and every one of you to be here. Sit down with your resume and work it. 
We're working hard. For formatting, I prefer Canva. I love Canva. I think they have a fantastic design element to it. Most of it's free, but they do have a paid version where you get access to a little more, as always. But there's templates all over the internet that you have access to. Either way, please let me know if you need anything. I'm so happy you spent the last little bit with me, and I can't wait to see you again. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.